What does it mean to know everything about something? Like a tree, you might know the color of its leaves, how tall it is, and even what day you planted it. But do you know how many atoms it has exactly? And what each of those atoms is doing at a given moment in time? And with the little that you do know about the tree, how do you know what you know? How do you know the tree's leaves are green if not for the light that bounces off of them? If the sun went out and there was no light in our world, would you still know the color of the leaves? It's perhaps a surprise to many people that these philosophical questions can be addressed using mathematics. In doing so, a very important concept is born, one which has subconsciously guided modern math and physics in the past hundred years or more. I'm talking about the Yonei Dilemma, which is a result from the area of category theory in math. The Yonei Dilemma was supposedly born in the train station Gare du Nord in Paris around the year 1954. There in France, the young Japanese mathematician Nobuo Yoneda was studying under Samuel Eilenberg, one of the two main founders of category theory. It was there in the train station that Yoneda talked with Saunders MacLean, the second founder of category theory. There in that train station, Yoneda explained his lemma to MacLean in a conversation that shaped mathematical history. To explain what the Yoneda lemma is, and why it is so impactful for both mathematics and philosophy, I'll borrow an analogy given by Ravi Vakil, a mathematician and current president of the American Mathematical Society. Imagine you're a particle physicist, trying to understand a particle that is so small that you cannot see nor touch it with your own body. How can you try and understand this particle and all of its complexities? What you do is build a massive accelerator that will speed up your particle and collide it with other particles. Then you will measure how your particle interacts with the rest of the particles. When you speed it up, slow it down, you will see every interaction of your particle with its surroundings. In this way, you learn all about it, although you never see it directly. This is the essence of the Yonei Dilemma. Essentially, it says that all of the information of an object is encoded in how it interacts with its surroundings. If you know how your particle interacts with all other particles, then that is the same as knowing your particle fully. You can rest assured that there is no other information on your particle that you're missing if you have run tests on how the particle interacts with everything else. In mathematics, this provides an incredibly important philosophy. Say that you want to study a shape like the torus. How do you uncover the mysterious and intricate properties of this object? The Yonei Dilemma says that knowing about this object is the same as knowing about its interactions with other structures. This suggests that you can consider maps between the torus and other topological shapes, like for example a sphere. These maps between the torus and all other shapes may be easier to study than the torus itself. And if you understand these maps fully, the Yonei Dilemma says that you understand the torus fully as well. But this doesn't have to just apply to geometry. Think about studying a number system like the complex numbers. To learn about the complex numbers, the Yonei Dilemma suggests that you look at its relationships with other number systems, like the real numbers for instance. By learning all about functions between the complex numbers and other number systems or other structures, you gain all the information there is to know about the complex numbers. Returning to our first example, when we talk about knowing all there is to know about a tree, what we really mean is knowing its relationship with the universe around it. What we see as the color of its leaves is really just seeing the interaction between the leaves and light. When we hear the sounds of the leaves of the tree rustling, this is really just us seeing the interaction between the medium of air and the movement of the tree. When we see how much people love and adore the tree, we again see the interaction of the tree, this time with humankind. The Yoneda perspective is a beautiful piece of math and philosophy. It is very much mathematical in nature. It can be stated as a theorem with a formal and rigorous proof. I skipped out on this for this video because I thought this would be too complicated for the non-mathematician to quickly digest and would only obscure the philosophical message that the Yoneda lemma conveys. 
But if you are interested, I encourage you to look at the rigorous statement and its proof. But this will probably require you to learn the basics of category theory. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again in the next video.